Hey everybody, welcome to the video. I'm Jeffrey, and this is Busy Being Terrible. So if you saw my past videos, you know I had an issue with my PC and I rebuilt it using a Ryzen 5 3600. At the time, I didn't have the AM4 bracket for my AIO, so I installed the stock cooler. A few days later though, I got a different AIO cooler from a friend, and I was able to do a couple benchmarks, and I wanna share that information with you to show just how important a cooler can be to the overall performance of your system. Here you can see a picture just comparing the AIO to the Wraith Stealth cooler. The Stealth is actually the smallest stock Ryzen cooler and that comes with the 3600. And here's an after picture of the EVGA CLC 280mm AIO installed in my system. You may notice at the top right I had to remove the DVD drive from the system. The five and a quarter inch bay was just causing interference and I couldn't get the cooler mounted otherwise. That's really no issue because I haven't needed a disk drive in a long time. So for my tests, I had the memory at the speeds of the XMP profile, and I had Ryzen Precision Boost Overdrive enabled in the BIOS. For each cooling setup, I ran Cinebitch R20 three times back to back, and I captured the logs and information with hardware info. This graph shows the race stealth with a score of 3258, and the EVGA AIO with a score of 3623, that's an 11% improvement just by changing the cooler. This graph shows the reason for the score difference. With the AIO, the clock is able to consistently stay at 4.1 gigahertz throughout all tests, while the stock cooler initially touches four gigahertz, but then drops down to 3.9 for the remainder of the tests. Most of that difference will be related to the temperatures, so the AIO consistently stays between 70 and 71 degrees throughout the test, while the stock cooler quickly jumps up to 89 degrees and then reaches 90 by the end of the last test. Here looking at the power consumed by each test, we see that the AIO was able to consistently stay around 40 watts usage, while the stock cooler quickly dropped to 35 watts and looks by the end of the last test that it would drop even lower. And finally, this graph of the voltage shows that the AIO is able to stay 0.1 volts higher while under load when compared to the race stealth cooler. And the stock cooler actually has to drop voltage when under load to keep its temperature in check. In conclusion, with the AIO installed, the processor can consume more power to achieve higher performance, all while keeping significantly lower temperatures. So if you build a similar PC, the Race Stealth cooler will work, but if you're looking for the most performance out of your CPU, then you should look to upgrade the cooler. If you wanted to overclock, this would be even more important. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and remember to stay terrible out there.